Doomsday is one of the most versatile clients for Minecraft Java Audition and today I'm showing you how to get it for 1.21.8 or really any other version you want. So to get it, you want to head over to their official website. As you can see, I'm already there right now. This is going to be linked right down in the description below. Together actually with my Discord server where you can find many more clients just like this one. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you could join that. On their website though, you can simply press on this blue download now button and then click on download once again and your download will start. In my downloads, now I've got the doomsday jar file. The name of this is going to be randomized as you can see. Anyways, to use this, you do need the Java development kit installed on your device. You already have this if you've ever modded Minecraft or anything like that before. If you don't have this yet or you're not sure where to get it, then I will link it right down in the description below. Anyways, we can simply double click on this file and then it is going to open up. If that doesn't work for you, then you want to right click, go to open with, and then select the Java development kit platform, whatever I just said you needed. This is going to open up the doomsday client installer slash injector. Doomsday client, there's so many ways you can use it. So you can inject it into Minecraft, which I'll demonstrate in a, uh, in a few minutes. There's an advanced injects option, which I'm not going to be covering, and there is also the option to install it. So you can install it as its own installation for, well, pretty much any Minecraft version. Here it's just going to list all of the Minecraft versions that you currently have installed. Apart from installing it as its own installation, you can also install it as a Forge or Fabric mod, which that's even cooler. Anyways, uh, in the updates area, you can also just view all recent Doomsday updates. I'll start by simply installing this for 1.21.8 right over here, and then I can just click on install, and bam, it's been installed. I didn't install it as a Forge or Fabric mod, and so I shouldn't launch Forge or Fabric. Um, if you did, which is also totally reasonable, then do that. But just as an example, I installed it just on its own. So you can then go over to the Installations tab if you did that as well. Go to New Installation, and then you want to look for Doomsday right over here. And then in this case, I'll see Modified 1.21.8 Doomsday. And that is going to be a standalone installation of Doomsday Client right over here. And I'll just call this um, Doomsday 1.21.8, for example. Click on Install right over there. And after understanding the risks of playing modded Minecraft, that's just going to go ahead and install and then automatically launch. And so now it's going to say Minecraft 1.21.8 slash modified instead of modded fabric or forge or whatever, which of course are also once again options. You should select these if you want to use it alongside other mods, for example, like sodium or whatever. Now here, I've launched Minecraft 1.21.8 not modified, just completely clean vanilla. And as I said earlier, Doomsday actually also works as an injectable client. And what that basically means is, is we can simply click on inject right over here and just like that doomsday loaded successfully as you can see it found my minecraft process over here and it's now injected doomsday client into it you don't have to do this on the main screen you could be inside of a server or world or whatever and inject right in now i'm here inside of minecraft using the injectable version of doomsday client but you can use whichever method you want, just use the one that works best for you. Inside of Minecraft, they're all going to work literally the exact same, which is nice. And I'm going to show you exactly how they work right about now. If you want a full in-depth usage tutorial of Doomsday Client, then I have actually made that already though. So for right now, I'll just show you how to get started and I'll link that full tutorial down in the description below. Anyways, to get started, you can press on the right shift button on your keyboard, and that is going to open up the Doomsday Click GUI. Basically, this area right over here. It contains all of the utilities that Doomsday Client offers. To use this, it's just as any other Click GUI. If you've ever used them before, click on these utilities to turn them on, click on them once again to turn them off, and you can even right click on them, and you'll get a little customization menu right over there, which is pretty neat. All customization menus are going to be unique. Anyways, it's really simple to use actually. There's not much more to explain than that. Uh, in this search area over here though, you can of course also 
search for specific utilities. So Doomsday Client is kind of a ghost client, which means that it has a, quite a few utilities intended to help you bypass anti-cheats. Now, when you set up customizations in this menu and restart the game, it'll probably forget them. And that's why up here, we also have a config menu. This allows you to create configurations. And when you create one, it'll save all of the customizations that you have set up in this area over here. Apart from just creating them, you can load different ones whenever you want and actually import and share them with friends or a community as well, which is neat. Talking about friends, you can add Doomsday specific friends in the friends menu and Doomsday Client also has a self-destruct menu with a default keybind of L. So if you ever press L and then wonder where the client went, well, it was deleted completely from your device because that's what self-destruct mode does. As I said, Doomsday is a ghost client which intends to minimize detectability and of course, you got to have a self-destruct mode. Now, finally, in this GUI customization area, you can change a little bit of the general settings for this quick GUI menu, including the actual keybind to open it. As I said, it's defaulted to right shift, but if you want to change that, then you can do so in the GUI customization menu. Anyways, for the rest, definitely mess around with this. Check out all the utilities that there are. There is quite a lot of them. Um, however, for right now, I guess that was basically that. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I do, of course, hope to see you all again in the next one. Bye-bye.